Most college graduates get a summer job, apply to grad schools, or begin their careers. At 23, Ben and Lisa Sibyl were beginning their lives as farmers. Starting out, I was uh, majoring in environmental studies. Um, and when you study environmental issues, you cover a wide range of topics. Um, and it just happened that while I was at college, I did an internship at a uh, farm and really liked it and really uh, identified with the issues surrounding agriculture. And that's really where I chose to pursue it and to pursue it in a production uh, business side of it. We got married and we decided we were going to go out and buy a farm. <laughs> so uh, we got married in October and we went searching for a farm and we bought this in January of that following year of 2004. So it was pretty crazy. I enjoy it. I never, sometimes I come out and I'm working and I'm exhausted at the end of the day and I think I never thought that I'd be <laughs> living on a farm or working on a farm or anything for that matter. And I really enjoy it. I think that I would be bored if I wasn't doing this. So. Ben and Lisa are not your typical farmers. Besides being young, their farm is part of the community-supported agriculture program where members pay a fee and own a share of the harvest. To subscribe to the community-supported agriculture program cost is an annual fee of $525. Um, currently, we figure that price based on what we give out um, to the members in terms of with our expenses and things like that to raise the crop. The Community Supported Agriculture Program, from a farming standpoint and from a business standpoint, um, is a good system for the farm because the direct relationship that you have with your market is unlike any other farming business. Um, we know personally most of the people who are eating our produce. I think people really forget where their food comes from. They go to the grocery store and they get it. And You'd be pretty surprised at how many kids think that food comes from the grocery store. So a lot of the people will be enjoying these lettuces tonight for dinner, which at the grocery store, um, the time elapsed from harvest to consumption uh, is rarely that close. It seemed like it might be the only way that we could actually be farming in this day and age um, and making a living. And have the ability to buy a farm as people that aren't having a farm handed down to them or you know available to them through a family. Um, it just makes a lot of sense and socially it seemed appropriate for us. We both kind of feel like um, the local aspect of agriculture is really important and this was a way for us to make sure that what we were doing stayed locally and became kind of a community thing. Right now, as far as the CSA goes, we have about 100 families that are subscribers. Um, because of the slow spring that we had this year, we decided to stay at 100 um, for the remainder of the spring. We will be taking probably about 50 more members um, in July, the end of July, when the summer crops come on. Community-supported agriculture presents a more efficient way of making a profit. But when it comes down to it, Ben and Lisa are still just farmers presented with the same age-old obstacles. The number one challenge of CSA farming is the large variety of crops that you must raise. It is very challenging sometimes to keep everything separate and to get all your plantings in on time. We raise over 40 different crops here. and There are huge challenges and obstacles to getting them all planted, and getting them all taken care of and then getting them to harvest. That's probably the number one challenge. After the day's harvest, Ben and Lisa have bounties of okra, lettuce, and kale. Once they pack up the truck, it's off to Worthington, where members are awaiting its arrival. The kind of produce that we are growing, the way we're growing it, in the way that we're offering it to them. And um, you don't get that if you're just selling to a grocery store or any of that. We have the personal relationship and they are supportive of us no matter what happens. Our favorite vegetable right now is in season, it's kale. And we discovered it last year, had no idea what it was before, what to do with it. 
And um, we use it for just about everything now, from stir fries, our salads, just about everything we use kale, so it's pretty versatile. We just started this year, um, but so far it's been great. I think the produce is fresher, it tastes great. It's a, a more interesting variety of things that we might have picked out ourselves. We thought it would be interesting to um, try new foods. When you go to the grocery store, I always just tend to pick up my usual vegetables and I don't really try anything new or different and I thought this would force me since I've already bought it to, to try different things. This day and age, few people decide to become farmers at the age of 23. Although it was the road less traveled, Ben and Lisa are enjoying their lives on the farm. Buying a farm at 23, um, moving to that farm, making a living off the land, um, it's definitely a, a dream come true. And in this day and age, it's, it's a fairly, unfortunately, it's a fairly rare dream that not that many other people get to experience it. So I think with what we're doing here, hopefully that we can demonstrate that there is still a place for the small family farm if they're willing to farm in a way that's going to make it happen. Um, so it is a dream can come true and I, I think it has a great future.